New York City has a new plan to tackle the migrant crisis. It's teaming up with local faith leaders to help house new arrivals. 50 houses of worship will be opening their doors, setting up beds. Uh, participating sites will offer safe shelter every day with meals, uh, services, clothing, donations, and the other services traditionally offered at our other shelter sites. Uh, beyond opening their doors and providing these services, these sites will also connect asylum seekers with strong community networks. The mayor expects nearly 1,000 asylum seekers to be housed in houses of worship by August, the Muslim Community Center in Brooklyn, one of those sites. It has housed some 75 asylum seekers since August, and it is now taking on more. Joining us right now, Sonia Ali, executive director at the center. Ms. Ali, nice to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. So you've been taking on migrants since last August. How long have they been staying with you on average? So we've had some migrants that stayed with us over since now, from August to now, and then at times there are migrants that stay for about a month, six weeks, two weeks, just depending on how long they want to be with us and then where they want to move on with their journey. And how do, how do you take care of them? What happens there? So when they come in, we try to make sure that they feel welcomed and basically we provide for them bedding, clothing, toiletries. We have also, since we've been housing them since August, we have an ind individual migrant who stayed with us since August and he helps um, with the translation. Some of them are from Senegal, so the, there's a language barrier as well and they help with that situation. How have you been funding this? Because if you have them staying since August, you're not getting help from the city monetarily for this. No, as of n not right now, we aren't. So basically, it's community funded. We've also been working with um, the Interfaith Center of New York, Dr. Um, Reverend Chloe Breyer. She's been helping us with that in regards to giving us stipends so that we can continue to do the work that we're doing. And a lot of our community members, when they first initially heard that we were going to be housing migrants, they jumped in and they helped. Some would be cooking meals, some yeah. would be going to the restaurants, picking up food, just trying to do the best that they can. But that model is not sustainable. No, absolutely not. It's not. And that's why we are trying to work with the city and the fact that they are starting this initiative with NIDIS, I think will help us definitely in other houses of worship that are already doing this work. So you already signed up for this new initiative. Um, how many beds do you have available for migrants at this point? Right now we have 19 beds and we're currently housing 17 individuals. So you only have two beds available yes. to take in and, and the city is saying that they would pay you for those two beds? No, th so basically there's 19 beds that the city would be paying for. That's the limit that they have. Oh, so you, they would even take on the 17 that have already been housed there by you since August of last year? Yes, exactly. Right. And did they say how they, they would pay you? Is it monthly or? So right now they're working out those details. Um, we are trying to figure out, there's a certain list of requirements that you have to follow. So we're trying to fulfill those requirements. Like what? Give me um, an idea. Fire sprinkler, fire um, alarm, two showers, a small kitchenette area, just making sure that the needs are met, you know, for the individuals that are staying with us and there's no hazards. I have a question for you. You have criteria as to will you be allowed to house people. Do you have criteria for the people that you're housing? Who is allowed to stay, who is not? Do you have anything that sort of that breaks that down? So specifically as a Muslim community center, um, we, for our space, we have people that we're housing um, men. Okay. okay, that's the space that we, the space requires that for us, right? Um, we can't house families because the space is too open um, and women and children are not going to be housed with us. And do you ever do any kind of vetting process? Because I know coming to the border, I mean, unless we have diplomatic relations with some of these countries, you don't know their history, their criminal history as well, at all. So we have, we've been working with um, Adam Abba. She is the one that is a port authority. And when she brings in these, um, when she welcomes the migrants and the asylum seekers, she's the one who sits with them and interviews them and speaks to them. And she's basically the individual that's like, okay, I have this individual, this is their story, this is what they need. And she just can't vet that though. She can't vet it that yeah. way, but at this point, what really can we do? Yeah. What problems have you had at the uh, center? So we haven't had any problems with the migrants um, specifically. 
but in regards to a larger scale we are right now running out of funds that's the issue that we've been trying to battle for the past you know 10 months we've been trying to live up to the to to our you know our sayings and adherences but that's an issue that we're having what are the the other challenges I mean what do the migrants do all day so a lot of them when they come in we try to walk it's a traumatic journey that they've gone through I think we don't understand that I think when we have to when we sit down with these individuals and hear their stories of their journey it's just very eye-opening I think a lot of times what people don't understand is these are people who are seeking a better life for their families and so the the migrants when they do come in we try to make sure that they are they get acclimated to the climate to the space and we help them the city has been helping us in the sense of trying to guide us through immigration processes um, helping apply for health insurance IDNYC IDs so we do they get a stipend as well do they get any cards uh, with a so we have been trying to provide metro cards through the interfaith center just things that we can do to help them with that process are you seeing the biggest area where they are being failed at whether it is not being able to work whether it's not being able to access you know different family members where's the where's the real problem that you're seeing right now obviously there's the housing is an issue but yes. this is new york that's going to be an issue but yeah. where where are we failing them that's for me i feel like we're trying to do our best I don't want to make it into a sense of like why where are we failing I think the fact that we are being I don't want to say bombarded but for lack of a better word buses are coming in daily and the fact that the city and all these other houses of worship are already trying their best I think we have to look at it in a positive light like what we can do to the best of our ability at this point well we appreciate you doing your your part to help everybody in this city um, and um, Hopefully, people out there will see this and support you in your efforts. So, Niali, thank you so much. You're in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, yes, right? Yes, we are, Sunset Park, Brooklyn. All right. Thank All you so much. You. Thank, thank you so you. much.